Hello Virgo, welcome to your weekly reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of April 9th through April 15th. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, especially if this reading uh, resonates with you, right? Now this is going to be a general reading and we're just going to jump right in. We're not gonna waste any time. Princess of Cups, that's interesting energy. Uh, let's do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card before I forget. I've been forgetting lately. Uh, so we're gonna put that right there. We're not gonna look at it till the very end. And hopefully it will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. Okay, so please stick around till the end. Uh, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, okay? I really appreciate you. So the first card is the Princess of Cups. I feel like you, um, you're you in a, a new situation that feels unlike anything you've had before, okay? I feel like you're someone who has taken a bit of a risk in uh, this new this new feeling, okay? I think you're in a relationship or there's a relationship coming your way soon that is unlike anything you've felt before. It's going to be some new feelings. And then uh, I almost feel like you're going to be a little bit kind of taken aback by it because you're going to you're going to kind of feel something new that maybe it's been a long time since you felt this way uh, or you've never really felt this way about someone. Right. It's kind of a new feeling. And if you're not in a relationship now, I feel like this energy is coming fairly soon, maybe maybe towards the middle of the week. Right. But I feel like there's going to be these new feelings for someone. It's going to be a relationship. And if you are in a relationship now, I think that these kinds of feelings are going to develop in this relationship. Okay. So these, these are new feelings, uh, a new dynamic, a new way of being with someone. Okay. That um, is either entering your current relationship or will be coming in with a new relationship, okay? Um, and I think it's going to be a very, very pleasant experience, too. Uh, I feel like it's going to cause a little bit of that anxiety because it's it's so new. It's not, maybe not on anxiety, maybe the butterflies, you know? It's going to be that, that butterfly feeling. We've got a two. So I feel like there's something that's kind of stopping you from really going with the flow of this energy, you know, as much as this princess of cups is just, uh, getting pretty excited, has the butterflies really is, is interested in this situation, wants to keep going, wants to continue to, um, to become familiar with this situation. There's something in the back of your mind with this two of swords that's stopping you, you know, something that's saying, Hey, 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 Virgo, wait a minute. Let's not jump into things too fast. Let's take our time. Let's really think this through. Let's use our intellect. Let's not just, um, you know, let our, our heart, you know, do the walking. But let's just, let's think about it first. Okay. And so I wonder if that is because of some um, past experiences, because you have kind of been down a similar road before, not quite like this, but you, something's kind of unknown, something feels new, something gives you this butterfly feeling. If you're being led in that direction, you have that kind of check and balance in your mind, you know, to, to say, wait a minute, let's think about it. Let's, uh, let's analyze it and let's try to look at it objectively. Okay. And I wonder, I wonder what's going on beneath the surface, if this is something that is maybe preventing you from finding the type of relationship that you want or allowing your current relationship, if you're in a relationship now, allowing the current relationship to become what you want it to be, All right? There's something holding you back. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Fool energy, fool energy. Down beneath everything, underneath all of the rest of you, um, there is this desire to kind of um, to, to be free, right? There's this underlying impulse to not commit, to not be tied down, to not be um, 
kind of beholden to one relationship, one situation. Now, this doesn't have to be romantic. Okay, this could be professional career. This could be something artistic. This could be a friendship, but it kind of feels romantic, but we'll see as we go through. Okay. But with the fool, I feel like you don't really want to limit yourself. You have this wanderlust inside of you. Okay. And I, it, I almost feel like you start to get really interested in someone or in this situation or in this company or whatever it is. You start to get really interested. You get those butterflies and you start getting kind of attached. And that's when your mind pulls back and you just say, no, 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 no. Let's wait. Let's think about this. Let's maybe just, let's maybe just put a stop to it all together. Maybe this is just barring the way saying no. Okay. And I think that situation, that cycle of events is because you've got this fool energy within you. And this is that free spirit. This is that wanderlust. This is the energy that wants to just explore and experience. You don't want to be limited. You don't want to have a ball and chain. You don't want to have an itinerary even, right? You want to be able to go where the wind blows you, right? That's a, a, a deep seated kind of fundamental urge in you. I don't think it's one that you always realize. I think it's more of an unconscious urging, right? That could be contributing to why we, we always pull back from these kinds of situations when something feels new, we feel ourselves getting attached and getting uh, attracted to something, we pull back, we put a stop to it, okay? I think this fool energy is more of an unconscious um, uh, urging or striving for you. Let's see what maybe happened in the recent past. Let's see if there's other, some other kind of uh, basis for, for what's going on now or what this relationship might be. There we have a queen of wands. Interesting, a queen of wands. Now, this could be a fire sign person in your recent past. It could be someone uh, maybe a little bit older than you. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if... I don't know if this was a relationship that didn't quite, um, that wasn't quite reciprocating. You know what I mean? That wasn't quite uh, as loving and nurturing and as as caring as you needed at the time. This could go way, way back, right? The Queen of Wands, this could go way back even to childhood, young adulthood. It could be a relationship with someone that... Um, had a, there was love there, right? We have the queen. We have a water component here. Um, underneath it all, there was a lot of love there. There was support. There was connection. I think it may be a family member. Maybe it like um, could be an older sibling, but I'm, I'm almost thinking like a parent or grandparent or something. Um, because I feel like there is really a lot of love, but it is expressed in this harsh way. You know, it's like the parent who is overprotective uh, and kind of overbearing and micromanaging the, the kind of helicopter parent um, because there, there's, there's the water energy inside. It's all kind of, you know, they say it's, it's all based on love. It's because I love you. Well, it still manifests as this fiery energy, this abrasiveness, this controlling energy. So I wonder if this was a parent that was controlling or overbearing, uh, maybe very strict, right? There was a lot of love there. Again, we've got that water component. There was a lot of love, but I think it was almost completely covered up by this fire energy, by this strictness, this abrasiveness, okay? And I think that still has an influence on you, um, going into any kind of new relationship, especially this, the new development that we're seeing this week. Okay. And again, if you're in a relationship now, this is going to be a development of your current relationship. If you are not in a relationship, this is a, uh, a new experience that you're going to have. Okay. And I think it is going to, even in an unconscious way, trigger both this fool and this queen of wands. Okay, um, and that I think is why your, maybe your first instinct is going to be two of swords. Let's pull back. Let's put a stop to this, right? 
stop the train, I want to get off kind of deal. Okay. Um, what are you actually looking for? Hmm. Seven of Swords. I feel like you're just looking to not be bothered, honestly. Uh, I feel like your conscious aspiration, right? This is above everything on the path of the dove. Your conscious aspiration is to just be left alone, to just not be bothered by these um, suitors even, these annoyances, right? You're trying to focus on your goals. You're trying to focus whatever the Ace of Swords is for you. You're trying to focus on your truth, your path, uh, your will, your work, your career, your development, whatever it is that you are focused on. And you really could do without the distractions, right? And I think this is kind of the way that you are, the way you present yourself. This is your, your conscious mind, right? Um, saying like, yeah, you know, you, you, you can try to get to know me or try to have a relationship with me, but... Um, I'm not interested. I'm not going anywhere. I'm focused. I'm doing my thing, right? So you kind of laugh when, when people message you or text you or call your phone or stop by the house or they try to talk to you in public. You're just like, I'm not, I'm not having it. I'm not interested, right? I feel like intellectually you're so focused on your path, your work, your, almost your stubbornness is very important to you, you know? And then I feel like all of these, the people that are like, you know, sliding into your inbox and stuff, you just laugh it off because it's just like, they don't know that I'm, I'm not interested in that. I'm focused. I'm focused. So there is a lot of concentration of your, of your energy right now. I still nevertheless feel like underneath, we've got this princess of cups. You're going to have this feeling is coming, Right. Either meeting somebody, an encounter with somebody, or just having these feelings in the relationship you're in now even, um, this could be taking place. But your intellect, your mind, your rational thought, your conscious mind is going to say, no, I'm not interested. I wish, you know, I wish everyone would leave me alone. Um, so I just, I feel like you're kind of stubborn in that way, you know. And I still feel like it, it is coming from this queen of wands and this fool energy on an unconscious level, okay? Consciously, I think you're not interested, you have other things to focus on, and it's just, that's not a, that's not something you're interested in right now, you know? But what's the way forward here? Because this sounds like, um, it sounds like this is not the first time this has kind of gone down this way. So we have a seven of, of, of uh, pentacles, diamonds, coins. Um, it feels like, I don't know, this has given me kind of a, a bad feeling. I almost think that one, a, a reason why you're not interested is because you know that a relationship is going to fail anyway. That sounds pretty bad, right? That sounds pretty bad. Um, it seems to me like you just have just no faith in in the success of a relationship. You know, it feels like you you're very pessimistic about them, and you kind of already know that there it's not going to work out, right? So it's kind of a waste of your time, and it goes back to the seven of swords, this futility of trying to be in this relationship, and to the futility of going with this princess of cups, going in that direction, right? You know it's going to lead to just bad news anyway, so what's the point of even getting started? Right. Um, well, let's see what the path of the, of the serpent has to offer us. Now, please hit the like button if you don't mind. All right, now's a, now's a great time to do that if you haven't already. And hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification so uh, you don't miss the next weekly reading. All right. Okay. Chariot chariot. You're very protective of yourself. I can, I can feel that right away. Um, <clears throat> and even from the energy we saw on the path of the dove, you're very protective of yourself. You have your swords, your intellect, your mind, your wit, the sharpness of your communication, right? Um, is very protective of you. It, it 
safeguards your vulnerable bits, right? So with the chariot here, I feel like you're very much, um, you feel like you're out in the world, but you're not of the world. Does that make sense to you? Is that resonating with you? Um, I feel like this is your general energy, right? So I, I think you feel this way, that nobody really knows you, that when you're out in public or when you're out just existing in, in kind of the public world, um, you are kind of like this knight on this chariot. You're concealed, you're covered, you're just, um, you're protected against the kind of against the violence of the world, right? You're protected against the negative energy from the environment, from the world, from the people, from everybody, right? So you're going through this world. It's almost like, um, you know, it's almost like, uh, uh, it's almost like you're a traveler in a different land, you know, and you have to conceal yourself a little bit. You have to conceal who you really are, you know, and I think you're doing that with a lot of defense mechanisms, a lot of self-preservation tactics, okay? So I feel like even when you're moving in your workplace, in your social circles, in your, you know, your extracurricular activities, your social activities, I still feel like you're very much behind this suit of armor, you know? Um, and I feel like that's just kind of how you, that's how you exist in the world. Right. And a lot of that defense mechanism is through this intellectual energy, this air energy, the seven and the two. I think you're very, uh, you have a very sharp wit. Um, I think you have, um, I think you have a very, um, maybe a very dry sense of humor, a very sarcastic sense of humor. Um, and I feel like that's a way of just kind of like letting people know right off the bat that you are in kind of, you know, chariot mode where you are in a, almost always a defensive position, right? And so you kind of hit first just to let people know that, hey, I'm, I'm ready to fight if you should get too close. You know what I mean? I don't know how else to explain that, but um, it's a very distinct feeling. Hermit energy next in your environment. I think inside the suit of armor here, what do we have? We have a hermit. I think uh, ultimately that is kind of, that's your vibe. I feel like you are someone who, and even if you're in a relationship now, or if you're not, I feel like you're, you're naturally normally a hermit. You feel comfortable, more comfortable being alone. Okay. I feel like even in your environment, even in these social activities, your social circles, your workplace, you still feel, uh, that you are kind of isolated, that you are kind of a, the kind of the hermit, right? I mean, it's a very, very literal take on that card right now, because I feel like you are, you're way more comfortable. You can be yourself a lot more when you're alone. And I think you need those moments where you can take the suit of armor off. You can let down your defenses, right? And you can be yourself. You can exist with yourself and focus on your light and your creativity, your spiritual growth, your progress. Okay. I feel like these opportunities don't happen enough for you. Or maybe this, maybe this is your home. Maybe this is a certain part of your home where, where you can take the armor off and let your defenses down. Right. Uh, I think it's important for everyone to have at least a corner of a room, if not an entire room, dedicated to that kind of a sanctuary, right? Call it a temple, call it a, an altar, or just a just a, a corner of a bedroom or something where you can be alone and take your armor off and be kind of defenseless, be open, be vulnerable, right? And I feel like that's something that's important to you, even though I, I don't know how often you get that sort of opportunity. But I think that's what you really, that's what you really cherish and that's what really works for you. And now we've got a four of swords. We've got more of this kind of defensive air energy. And the four of swords is telling me that you really do shut things down before they get anywhere close to you. 
you know. Um, this is kind of a card that is avoiding any kind of real conversation with people, you know. This is a, a, a card that kind of avoids conflict because we don't want to get, we don't want to open ourselves, we don't want to have to open up a little bit of our armor, you know. We don't want to have to be vulnerable. Um, it's so it, it's more of that self-preservation, that that self-protection. So I feel like even in your the close relationships that you have, maybe in past romantic relationships, current romantic relationships, there's this avoidance uh, going on, you know. And that I think is something you're aware of because this is the card. The position is in the fears, worries, and concerns. So I feel like it's something that you're aware of. You already know that you kind of tend to avoid um, deep conversations, deeply emotional or challenging conversations, right? Because I think you're a very sensitive, a very deep person, a very thoughtful person. I think you're full of love and full of ambition. But I feel like probably because of this, this Queen of Wands from the past, there are a lot of defenses around you. A lot of defenses. Let's see what the final card is on the Path of the Serpent. Hmm. Prince of Cups. Prince of Cups kind of is looking to me like maybe this is the other person that's involved here. It could be a water sign person. Um, I think it's interesting because we started with the Princess of Cups. And I think this was you having these new butterfly feelings about someone or something, right? And then the air energy kind of overriding it. But this is the initial impulse. This is the initial feeling this week. And then we kind of end with an evolution of that feeling. That feeling turns into a little bit more. There's something that maybe is allowing us to explore this relationship a little bit more. Right, we go from the princess to the prince. It grows a little bit, right? And the prince also has an air component. It's the air of water. So it could be that this is someone who, for whatever reason now, you feel comfortable letting down a little bit of your defenses, right? Maybe this is that relationship or that development of your current relationship that will allow you to take the armor off, be vulnerable, let your defensive down, defenses down, and be open. Maybe. But I kind of see you exploring this relationship a little bit. Going from princess to prince, it's a little bit of progress, a little bit of forward movement. So this is really good. Now I'm curious about this mystery card. I didn't think we were going to end with this, this relationship actually being... Uh, Maybe not fully embraced, but at least explored a little bit, right? So what's the mystery card? Well, the mystery card could be more air energy saying, nope, you're going to shut it down again. I don't want it to be that, okay? I want this to be... I want this either to be a six of cups. What I really, really want is this to be an empress energy, right? I want this to be a situation where you feel this love and this safety and this security and this nurturing energy that's going back and forth, that's reciprocating, right? Equal exchange of energy and love and support and affection, right? Because I don't think you've had that necessarily. I think this, maybe this fire sign person, this uh, queen of wands had something to do with, with that. Um, so I really want this to be an Empress energy. I feel that it's some Empress energy because I think this is what you are. This is what you ultimately want. This is your ideal. This is what you deserve. And I think this is going to be almost like this, the freedom that you want with the fool freedom from other people. Um, you know, you're, you're moving with the wind. So it's hard for people to really hit you, to pinpoint you, to, uh, to get close to you because you're always flowing like the wind, right? So I think this is a little bit more unity, stability. 
uh, feeling safe and connected and having this equal reciprocating relationship with someone or something that still could be a career thing. Empress energy. Yes. Yes, beautiful Empress energy. Virgo, I think this is the best reading that we've had for you. I think we really got somewhere. I think we've, you know, we've really penetrated deeply into this. Now, I'm sorry if this was a difficult reading. It was kind of difficult for me because every card kind of was going in a certain direction. This card makes me happy. I hope this makes you happy as well. I hope you'll leave me some comments and let me know how you're doing. Um, let me know how this plays out for you, okay? I'm, I'm invested in your happiness, right? I really am, and I mean that. And, you know, I think that this is, it's not a guarantee, but this is a pretty good sign that, that you're going to have this, this level of, of relationship, this level of love in your relationship, either in your current relationship or in this new relationship. But again, this, this Princess of Cups, this is going to be the, the, the thing that sets it all off. This is the kind of the first step in all of this, right? And it really is leading to a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I'm so, I'm so happy that this is even in the cards for you, right? No, no pun intended. But that this is a potential. I love this. And I'm very happy about it. We're going to do an extended. If you want to stick around, please click on the link that's right up here. And you can have access to all of the extended readings. Okay. This was your weekly reading April 9th through 15th on Dove and Serpent Tarot.